Did Google just kill ArcViz? So using their latest image model, Nano Banana, I was able to take this SketchUp image and turn it into this photorealistic rendering you see here in less than 10 seconds. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did this, break down some nice use cases, and give you pros and cons of the tools. So let's get started. So here I am in Google AI Studio, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to SketchUp and I'm gonna grab a snippet of this project and drop it in. Then I already wrote a prompt and the prompt is going to describe all the materials. So as you can see here, I'm just asking it to make it look like a photo out of a magazine and I'm giving it some material information. So I'm saying, hey, I want the red parts to be brick. I want the brown to be cedar shake. So I want to see if it's going to pick up on any of that. And then I'm saying, you know, to reinforce the idea, I want realistic lighting materials and context. So let's hit run. And as you can see here, it's telling me how long it's going to take. I'm not going to cut here. I want you to see how long this actually takes. This is fast. In less than 10 seconds, it generates something. And here we go. So what I've noticed, something interesting happening. Um, sometimes it gives me these views that look like a rendered SketchUp view. But then if I run the same prompt again, watch this. I haven't been able to figure out why it does this. If I run it again, it's gonna look like an actual photo. A little bizarre, um, but this is also like one of the reasons why I think AI will impact ArcViz, but I also don't think it's gonna like completely erase ArcViz as a whole because like the consistency is still not there. So like here, it looks like a photo. It actually looks, looks pretty good. Um, so I don't know why it does that. But anyways, this is the power of the tool. You can actually iterate quite nicely. So let's say I want um, you know, some nice landscaping in the front. So check this out. Add realistic landscaping, foreground, and I'll send this off. And just taking a look at the materials, you can see that it missed a couple spots. You know, this should all be white. This part, this part's correct, but the middle part's wrong. So here it's adding some some trees to the side, but I want I want more. So let's say more shrubs bottom of the image. And so this is a kind of nice thing that I can actually target specific things. So when I say bottom, it should give me shrubs here. And there you go. So we've got some nice planting here and it's kind of nice that I can direct it, um, but I feel like it's gonna get trickier when you wanna target specific areas. And I think that's where it's gonna get a little frustrating working with AI over just doing it traditionally. I mean, the traditional model and rendering process, like that was 10 hours right there. This, I mean, we're like two minutes in and we've already done so much. So it's definitely gonna be some pros and cons to like tweaking this and everything. But overall, this is pretty cool. And it does a great job preserving the overall structure of the image. So what I mean by that is, let's say I wanna make it a night scene. Make this nighttime. I don't even need to say like, turn on the lights and everything, it understands that. And I feel like just a couple months ago, we were talking about how amazing, you know, Flux Context Max was and everything. But this, I feel like is on the same level. So look at that, it preserves everything, materials came over, it understood exactly what I was talking about with the lights and the nighttime. Like this looks really good and this, a you know, couple minutes and we get really nice results. I could see this for like really nice rapid prototyping. Um, I wouldn't use this for final renderings. I still don't think it's it's there, especially with like the precision. I, I can't have like incorrect faces, but it is nice to just flush some ideas out. So like what I could say instead of red brick, let's do vertical batten board white. So like, this is where I think the power is. I don't think it's gonna, you know, completely replace designers and archivists. Um, although I do think, you know, some clientele might just do this. So there you go. Like very, very quick, hard to compete with, right? Um, but again, my point stands that inconsistent. So like here, this was Cedar and then this changed the batten, but this was never supposed to be batten. If we go back to our original image, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, I see how that was brown. So, you know, some weird quirks there. But anyways, we got a nice image, a couple minutes. So this is one use case, just like generating it to make it look realistic. But another nice use case is like, if you wanna do a style transfer. So let's say I want this to look like a pencil sketch. I can send that off. And now I don't need to go into Photoshop, find some actions that will automatically do this. Like this is a nice, easy way to do that style transfer, which I think early on in a project, you might wanna do. So that's kind of fun. And then what I could do, you know, 
let's say I don't want to do pencil sketch and I want to do watercolor. I can actually specify which image I want it to branch off of. So if I go over here and I select this guy, I can hit branch from here. And now it's going to use this as the reference. So now I'll say, make this a loose watercolor illustration. And it's going to use this instead of the night scene. So we shouldn't see shrubs here when we send that off. So that's kind of nice if you want to go down a specific design option, branch off, and then here you go. So here we've got, you know, kind of like a, a watercolor look. I feel like it still looks a little bit too much of a drawing. And this is kind of what I like because I can say, make it more gestural and loose. And then it's going to be less detailed. Um, Cause again, the whole point of like a watercolor is to make it look like the thing, get the colors, but not the exact details. So here we go. So it even added some splatter, which is kind of fun, but this looks beautiful. Like this is something I could show very early on just to see if they like the materials that we're going with the color palette. Right. But I wonder if we could say, remove the splatter. Cause that would actually save me some time in Photoshop. Right. And there you go. So. Overall, it does a really good job with comprehension. So talking about comprehension, let's talk about another use case, virtual staging. And I feel like virtual staging at this point is just like, there's no money there. I, I feel like everyone's doing it on Fiverr for like 10 bucks. Um, but for your own apartment or house, if you want to stage a room, this is what you could do. So I'm going to grab this image and I'm going to start a new chat. You just click right here. I'm going to paste that image in and let's say design this living room using mid century furniture. And what I'm going to do to kind of complicate things is I want to grab a specific sofa. So I'm going to grab this one from West Elm and I'm going to drop this in because I can actually have multiple references. And there we go. It's the same room. We've got our window over here. It added furniture. That's our sofa. It added the accent chairs that go nicely. And these are actually West Elm chairs too. So that's pretty crazy that it did that. I think even like this, decor and a coffee table is. So that's actually really, really creepy. So now watch this, turn that orange sofa to yellow and it should target that. And again, I've said this before, but like, this is the real power of this, like the easy tweaks because to do this manually, you know, take some time and there you go. And it looks really good. Like, the shading, you know, the lighting makes sense. Like think about the windows this way and our shadows are being offset to the left. So it understands all that. So there's a lot of potential here for that. The, um, the one thing I haven't seen solved, and this is the, um, the part of AI that I think will actually destroy ArcViz and design if it could do this. So watch this. I'm going to, I'm going to move back, um, going through the history of our chat, right? So this was the, um, the house we were just looking at. So we figured out the materials here. I know it didn't do a perfect job, right? But let's say like we did the work of this exercise. This is what I noticed all AI tools kind of struggle with. So if I copy this and I say, Hey, I want to see another side of the project. Let's say, let's say I just scoot it over here. Like we're not even looking that different and we're just grabbing another view of it. Okay. And I drop this in. Watch what's going to happen. Let me save this out. We'll go to new chat and watch this. So that's the new sketch of you. And I'm going to upload a photo. It also connects to your drive, which is kind of nice. If you are a Google drive person and say using these materials, apply it to the SketchUp file. So it's not that different, right? Like we just crank the camera a little bit and you'll notice that it has a hard time retaining that same consistency and this is the weird thing that keeps happening. Like not only did it not move the camera, but it like just didn't do what I wanted it to do. And I've noticed this with new chats as well as continuing previous chats. So even if I were to hop into here, it won't do it. So watch this. I'll put this here. Can you apply the same materials to this view? It won't rotate it. And it's not even like I've hit like the token limit or anything. Um, so weird quirks, maybe it's just like a early build and it's just not mature yet, but I feel like no AI tool has really nailed this. And that's always been the thing that I've, I've mentioned when I talk about AI and like ArcViz, 
until I can do this in real time, because what happens is like you're on a Zoom call with a client, you're like flying through the real time environment. You know, let's say you've got D5 render open and you wanna, you know, show them different spaces. Until I can like actually render this with like AI in real time, I don't find it to be that useful. It's good for these like one offs where you just need like one image or you want a prototype. But like if I wanna see the left side or the rear side, and like I can't maintain the consistency of like the same materials and everything, then it's not not really useful. Um, same thing with the landscaping. Like if we're saying, hey, put you know a landscape island here and there, and then I rotate the camera and it looks completely different, that's not great. So it's good for these like quick little things, but not a total industry killer, if that makes sense. But anyways, I think it's all all super promising. If this can help you like speed up, you know, your material selection, I think it's a great tool but I don't think this is the end of ArcViz, at least not for now. Um, I feel like the quality in general has definitely gotten better with all these tools, but I don't think we're there yet. Until we can like generate animations that retain consistency and even just orbit and rotate and all that stuff is there, I think we're good. I think we're safe. Designers, we're fine. But virtual staging, this stuff, I think this stuff is like long gone and, and it has been for a while. Um, but I think it's, it's just nifty if you want to redesign um, a space. Anyways, if you have any questions about this, drop it in the comments. I'll get back to you. And as always, if you enjoy this content, think about subscribing and liking the video. See you next time.